Hello and thanks for joining us this week on the Bison Basketball Show. I'm Brian Sean. We've reached the midway point of the Summit League schedule with tournament time just over a month away. The North Dakota State men hope to get back to its winning ways at home this past week, hosting a pair of conference foes at the Shield Center, starting with Omaha. The Bison and Mavericks meeting for the 78th time in the series. NDSU trailed early on, but getting things rolling. Paul Miller, one of his five assists to a cutting Tyson Ward for the big jam. The Herd also got on the offensive glass early, collecting 15 second chance points. Spencer Elias in the rebound and ball rotation to Paul Miller for three. In the game, Miller becoming the 12th NDSU player in history to score 1,500 career points. Rocky Cruiser came off the bench to play 18 quality minutes and hits the triple as the Bison take the lead by four and they keep their foot on the gas. Tyson Ward with the steal and another big jam on the other end. He scored 17 points off the bench. It was all a part of a 16-0 run for NDSU. Chris Quayle making his second straight start hit three shots from outside the arc. North Dakota State led by 10 going into the locker room. In the second half, Miller continues to shine one of his four three-pointers. He scored a game-high 25 points, his eighth consecutive games of 20-plus point scoring. Eliason chipped in with eight points, two on the hook shot, to put NDSU up 19 midway through the second half. Cruiser would hit his second three of the game moments later. The Bison shot 42% as a team from long range as they go on for the 73-58 victory. The Bison had 20 points off turnovers and improved to 3-3 three and three in conference play. Yeah, we, uh, we made a lot of adjustments kind of to how we, our main principles defensively and obviously they worked tonight, you know, holding them under 60, um, but just something we can keep getting better at. Um, they didn't shoot that well tonight, and that's credit both to, to how we were defending and they just missed some shots. That's what we're really uh, working on in practice, and I think that's what we're really emphasizing on the court, and we're executing our, uh, our, our scouts, and we're getting better at that, and that's where we're going to win games. Less than two days later, the Bison back on their home floor to host Western Illinois, and the Leathernecks come out firing behind the hot shooting of freshman Kobe Webster. He scored 18 first-half points on 7 of 11 shooting to help build an early 12-point lead. The Bison would rally back with an 18-4 run, freshman Rocky Cruiser spotting up and burying the three, NDSU getting 27 points off the bench. Paul Miller continued his hot shooting in Summit League play, spinning back inside for two off the glass to get the Bison back within one. Miller is also fourth in the Summit League in assists. Nice dish finding Dylan Miller cutting to the basket off the screen and roll for the jam. Then tied at 40 just before half, the senior from Waukesha, Wisconsin driving in, hanging and scoring on the reverse lay-in. NDSU led it 42-40 after the first 20 minutes. In the second half, Spencer Eliason able to muscle in a couple of buckets inside, including this tough jumper in the lane over Brandon Gilbeck, the leading shot blocker in the Summit League. Dengu would come off the bench to score nine points in the second half to get the Bison some breathing room, including his third three-pointer of the season. Freshman Cameron Hunter chipped in with 13 points as well, including the deep three as the shot clock winds down, plus the foul for a four-point play to stretch the lead to double digits. North Dakota State shot 59% in the second half to pick up its second straight victory, 80-69. The Herd had 32 points in the paint and held Western Illinois to just 29 second half points. Coach kind of got into us in one of the timeouts, and I feel like that really got us going, and we got our momentum back and finished it off. Uh, these were two big wins that we had to have uh, coming off a couple of losses, so it's good to get back on the right track. We just try to be more locked in. Uh, practice has been really good, so just getting that energy and carrying it over. Yeah, it felt really good. Uh, once I saw that first shot go, it go in, I got comfortable, and everything just started coming in. The Bison men have moved back into third place in the Summit League standings and have two more border battles coming up this week. NDSU head coach Dave Richmond will join us in studio next to preview those matchups. The Bison Basketball Show on Midco Sports Network is presented by Nodak Insurance Company, Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, and Proceed.
Welcome back to the Bison Basketball Show. NDSU men's coach Dave Richmond joining us here on the set to break down the Bison men's homestand against Western Illinois and Omaha. And Dave, the guys responded, you know, after a, a, you know, the road trip out to Fort Wayne, two home games, two games. I think your guys play with a lot of urgency against Western Illinois and Omaha. I'm sure you're pleased with the two victories at home. Extremely pleased. I think, Brian, you go back to the game at Fort Wayne and just a difficult ending. Played pretty well in the first half, and then we just didn't defend at all in the second half. And, and when you give up 51, you're going to get beat. And there was there was outward visible frustration on our guys' part, which, from a sense, it was good. It was, it, I mean, it was it mattered, you know. And they were disappointed, and, and we were so close to getting a good road win. Well, that really carried over into our practices Monday, and, and then most importantly Tuesday. And I think Paul and AJ really set a tone that built on Wednesday and really carried over this weekend to get two terrific home wins. You talked a little bit about Paul Miller, and uh, the guy's just having a fantastic senior season. Summer League Player of the Week, nine games now of 20-plus points consecutively, mm -hmm. and he's shooting at a high percentage, right around over 50% in league play. Uh, I know you can't say enough about this guy, but is he even surprising you with some of the things he's doing? Yeah, it's kind of like the, with, with the superstition. I'm not even trying to talk about it right now. <laughs> but, no, very, very pleased with Paul. I mean, he's come a long way in so many ways in this program, and, and he's just having a, a terrific senior season, which you kind of expect from a guy like that. And going back to the Summit League tournament last year, again, talking about you know being visually uh, outward, outwardly frustrated, that was Paul. And, and, again, Paul wants nothing more to win, and, and, and he's just trying to do whatever he can for us to, to win. And, and he's always been able to score at a high level, but, again, going back to the last Tuesday's practice you know the the urgency that he was playing with defensively and, and him getting after guys for not competing defensively that really set the tone and when we have him on both both ends of the floor that's when we can become really good what gets overlooked sometimes too Dave fourth in the summit league and assisted almost four game he's doing yeah. it all on that end as well halfway point for your team what is it that you've liked the most in terms of how far you've come here in the month of January? Well, certainly we've had some ups and downs, but we've we've never hung our hat, or, you know, we never hung our heads, so to speak. And in, in some of those downs, we've kept competing. It's a really resilient group, and and I knew that all along. We have some youth and immaturities and from basketball standpoint, and especially at some important positions. And and it's about growing through that. Certainly, it, it's frustrating when you lose some. But we've grown through those, I, I really believe. And, and again, if we're able to carry over our practice this past week and our games at home and understand you know, we become not just a good team, but a really good team when we defend, that's when we got a really good chance to see that. And that's what we saw this weekend and we need to continue to build on. As you go into February, you talked about maybe the inconsistencies. As a coach, I know you're trying to get your guys to play their best basketball as you get towards the end of the season. How do you go about that? Or is that something you have to tinker with as a coach a little bit the last few weeks? Well, I think you're, you're tinkering a little bit. I think the big thing is just trying to be smart. Be smart with minutes. And when, when, when you can, be smart with your time and practice, your, your efficiency. Use the film room. Use the video as much as you can. But certainly, you know, we, we, we hope and feel like we're in a little bit of a groove and we've got to maintain that consistency. I think the biggest thing, especially with the younger group, is just building those habits, having a consistent routine and getting into that routine on a weekly basis. Next up. South Dakota, South Dakota State, just the way you started it you know, about a month ago, uh, right out of the chute to start the second half of play. Exciting to go to Frost Arena, a place you won last year, and then hosting South Dakota, a team that you're probably looking to, to get back after what happened last year, too. It's ironic how that's the way the schedule worked out. Yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is. It's next game up, and, and our guys are excited. They're, they're hopefully building some confidence and some swagger, but understanding that we need to build that confidence and swagger, but understand what got us there. And obviously two terrific teams, and that'll start, you know, at a fun place to play in Frost on Thursday night. Coming back, you know, it's kind of play five of your last seven on the road, and then after Saturday, really four of your last five. But the way the schedule lays out, like you mentioned, it is what it is, Dave. But at the same time, at least the road trips are two true road trips where you get to yeah. go on the road with the guys and maybe in a routine they've seen before. Yeah, and, and that's that's a great point, Brian. I felt like last year you were going somewhere, coming back for a home game a night or two later, and there, and there wasn't that consistency, that wasn't that routine. And if, if, if we build on this consistent uh, routine and these habits that we're hopefully building now, that can that can be good for us. And and we're not going to flip the schedule now. We you know <laughs> a big a big phrase like you know in our program is control. We can control, and we can control getting better at practice today, tomorrow, and then, and then a game at Frost on Thursday, and then we'll go from there. But, uh, you know, we're not trying to look too far ahead, obviously. Uh, we're just trying to get better on a daily basis, and I think this group is, is capable of a lot of things if we have that approach on a daily basis. All right, Dave, we appreciate the time, and uh, good luck this weekend. I appreciate you, Brian. Thank you. All right. Coming up on the Bison Basketball Show, Marn Walseth and the Bison women had a road trip this past weekend. We'll check out how they did against Omaha 
starting on Wednesday night and finishing up on the road at Western Illinois. That's after this timeout. Welcome back. The North Dakota State women's basketball team picked up its first conference victory of the season at home last weekend before embarking on another two-game road trip. The Bison taking on Omaha down at Baxter Arena to start things off. NDSU lost both games against the Mavericks a year ago, but starting this contest on a 17-5 run. Macy Quilvang, the feed to a cutting Riley Jacobson for two on the lay-in. Jacobson had a team high 18 points and eight rebounds. Taylor Thunstead continues to add to her career three-point total, hitting a pair of threes in the first quarter and now has 270 for her career. Omaha back within six late in the first quarter when Michelle Geislerova hits the long jumper. She chipped in with nine points off the bench, Bison up eight. NDSU had 23 assists on the night as well, Sarah Jacobson to Riley Nudell on the inbounds pass for two. But the Mavericks would finish the first half on a 24-9 run to grab the lead. Jess Walter hitting a pair of triples and scored 19 points. The Bison trailed by six at halftime. The Herd would try to keep pace in the third quarter. Great passing around the court as Autumn Ogden dishes to Nudell for another lay-in. She had 13 points. But Omaha would widen the gap to 15 by the end of the third quarter. Amber Vidal off the screen, hitting the off-balance jumper. She led all scores with 21 points as the Mavs pull out a 13-point victory, 80-67. The Bison shot 50% from the field, but only got to the free throw line three times and gave up 15 offensive rebounds. NDSU made the trip to Macomb, Illinois over the weekend to take on Western Illinois. Both teams scoring at will early on. Off the inbounds pass, Sarah Jacobson floating it inside to Riley Nudell. She hits the short jumper and scored 14 points. Jacobson had one of the best shooting performances of her career, hitting six three-pointers in the contest as the Bison take a two-point lead. The Leathernecks would rally for a 10-point advantage in the second quarter when Autumn Ogden cuts inside for the lay-in. North Dakota State shot nearly 50% from the floor in the first half, but turnovers led to some easy baskets on the other end for Western Illinois. Taylor Higginbotham had six steals and scored 16 points on the afternoon. The Bison had 21 turnovers in the game as the Leathernecks led by 11 at half. In the second half, both teams trading baskets. NDSU had 11 offensive rebounds, one leading to a Riley Jacobson jumper. She chipped in with 13 points. Sarah Jacobson would finish with a career-high 26 points to go along with seven rebounds and four assists as the herd tried to keep pace. But Western Illinois would finish the third quarter on a 13-3 run to put the game away. Emily Clements sneaking inside for the land on the backdoor feed. Western Illinois wins it 97-72. NDSU was 9 of 19 from three-point range for the game, but the turnovers led to 25 points for WIU. We now welcome Marn Walseth in to chat about Bison women's last road trip out to Omaha and Western Illinois, one of the longer and tougher road trips in the Summit League. And you've seen quite a few road trips already this season uh, too, Marn, but strong starts in both of those games, and then all of a sudden the second quarter maybe got you a little bit. What do you take away from those two games on the road? You know, starting each each game, the, the focus, the intent, the discipline is there. And, and then the bar is raised by our opponent, and that's where we struggle a little bit. I think a little bit of that is youth. Um, sometimes we get in our own heads. Uh, but being able to then continue to rally and, and continue to play hard is a quality that we possess. It's that gap that our opponents are able to ex uh, expend on us that, that we have a difficult time holding on to. And one of those things, too, and you had talked about this in the past with me, is you know, when a team goes on a run, it's just limiting the run and not letting the run get so insurmountable to a point where all yeah. of a sudden it, you're playing so far from behind. But it seems like there's been fewer of those once you got into conference play. I think there's a little bit, and part of that is the coaching staff and then our abilities to call timeouts, our abilities to make substitutions, make different play calls on the offensive end. Um, but also a lot of that is, is given credit to our, our players of understanding that two or four points is not insurmountable. It's not the end of the world, um, but continuing to put forth the effort and the energy to, to, like you said, limit them a little bit. It seems like you've been on the road forever in the month of January. I mean, the positive is you got five of your last seven at home, and then after the game at South Dakota, four of your last five at home. I'm guessing... 
that is so welcomed for you and the student athletes to actually be able to get into a routine in your home gym and in, in class and everything else. We do talk a lot about routine and being creatures of habit, um, but I will give our players a lot of credit. That hasn't been a part of the conversation of, oh my, oh my gosh, how difficult was January. It's more so let's continue to fight. Let's continue to get a little bit better each day, knowing that the month of February will be a welcome time at the shack. Absolutely. South Dakota State at home, South Dakota on the road. Maybe fitting way to start off the second <laughs> league of conference play. You're going to get tested right away out of the shoot these two games. What are you hoping to see out of your group in these two games coming up this week? Yeah, you know, right off the bat, we're with SDSU, and I was very pleased with our effort and our de defensive discipline uh, down at Frost Arena. I thought that was one of our better complete games. Um, if we can shore up some transition defense, I will feel much better about <laughs> that, uh, which I am confident that we can do. And then going down to Vermilion again, will be a challenge, uh, but understanding that we can play at our pace and value the basketball and get good shots off, um, I'm confident going into both. And offense has been the problem, Coach. We've talked about that. You guys are shooting the ball at a high clip. You're one of the top teams in the nation shooting the ball from outside the arc, and you've proved that. We saw Sarah Jacobson go off and hit six threes against Western Illinois. Mm -hmm. It's just finding the other part of that now on the defensive end, right? I give a lot of credit to our players for that increase in points per game, for that increase in free, uh three-point field goal percentage as well as overall field goal percentage, they're spending time in the gym on their own, which is fantastic. And so then it's our job as coaches in the team setting to continue to uh, gel and, and continue to refine our defensive habits and our defensive intensity so that, like you said, both ends are, are evened out. All right, Mara, thanks so much for the time and uh, good luck this week. Thank you. All right, stay with us here on the Bison Basketball Show. We go one-on-one -on -one with the only Bison senior on the women's roster, Taylor Funstead. That's after this. Welcome back. The North Dakota State women's basketball team only has one senior on the roster this season, and she happens to be one of the best three-point shooters in Summit League history. Taylor Thunstead has already set a program record with over 270 career triples and continues to add to it. This week, we go one-on-one -on -one with the Bison senior. All right, back for more one-on-one. -on -one. We are joined by senior Taylor Thunstead, who set a school record for a single season with 92 three-pointers last season. 92 threes. <laughs> can you believe you can hit that many three-pointers and, and set a school record doing that last year as a junior? I mean, I know shooting is kind of my thing, but you know, going into the season, you never really know what you're going to end up with. And I know you, you make your living out here at the three-pointer, obviously, and that's you did that in high school, you're doing that in college, but everybody's obviously on to you. You've shot mm -hmm. enough three-pointers now where people are starting to game plan against that. How do you have to adjust your game to get your shot off? Because it's not easy to do. I think one big thing is just like moving to get open. For me, it's um, they're obviously right next to me a lot more now than they were my freshman and sophomore year. So really moving to get open, creating space for myself, and just um, doing that extra move to get my get my space between my defender and shooting the shoot the basket. So. so obviously, I know you shoot. I know you're a shooter. So I'm trying to guard you. What are you looking at for me in terms of how I'm defending you to how you can get open for that extra move? Do you try to lull me to sleep a little bit? Um, yeah, maybe a little bit. I, I don't know, I cut down. I usually wait for your it, it all depends on how they're guarding me. I mean, if they have their hand down, it's, it's going to be automatic <laughs> shot every time. So the um, big thing is, is if they're using their right hand to, in front of the ball, if they have their wrong hand up, I'm, I'm shooting it. So <laughs> I don't know. It, it, kinda, it, all, it all depends on how they're playing me. When I see it's open, it's going up. So. <laughs> we know that over the yeah. years. We know it's going yep. up. <laughs> Um, you're the lone senior. It's uh, kind of hard to believe it's gone fast, I think, is it doesn't feel like you've been playing that long, but yet here you are and the only one in your class. Is that strange at all for you? Yeah, I mean, coming in, what was there? Four of us coming <laughs> in and I'm the last one here, but no, it's it's been a fun ride. I'm ready and um, yeah, I don't know. It's just it's flying by, but it's been, it's been fun, so I'm hoping to have a good good senior year and yeah, go with a bang. You're a sports management major. Yep. It's hard to believe, but here we are, like six, seven, eight months away from graduation. Yep. Uh, what, what does the future hold for you? Uh, I mean, I don't know. We'll see what basketball takes me. I am going to be open with options to go play somewhere. Otherwise, I want to start my own basketball training or maybe camps eventually. So, um, yeah, I did that a little bit of my internship this summer, but I want to hopefully do some of my own once I'm done playing basketball. So, yeah, I'm excited. Spicer, Minnesota. Tell us something about Spicer, Minnesota we may not know. <laughs> Well, it seems to me everybody knows Green Lake, so I don't know. <laughs> Green Lake is a big thing there. It's a, it's a really good place to be in the summer. It's it's very festive, a lot of people out on the lake, and um, I don't know. It's just have all the seasons there, and it's in the country. I love it. It's, it's a great place to be. So growing up, obviously, more in the country, 
you're a hunter, you do outdoor kinds of things. Have you always kind of done that, always been a part of your life? Um, I mean, I grew up, my stepdad was a big hunter growing up, and um, just kind of being that country feel, hunting has always just been, been around. I wasn't really into it when I was younger, but the older I'm getting, the more I'm getting into it. I'm, I mean, I'm not great, but I love, <laughs> I love to go, I love to be out there, so um, something that I'm hoping to get a little better at once I'm done playing basketball, but it's a, it's a fun hobby I like to do, so yeah. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to join us. Enjoy your senior season. Thank you. Taylor Thunstead, one-on-one. -on -one. Thunstead is a career 40% three-point shooter and is third all-time in Summit League history in triples made. We're back to put a close on this week's Bison Basketball Show after this. The Bison Basketball Show on Midco Sports Network is presented by Nodak Insurance Company, Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, and Proceed. Back to put a wrap on this week's episode of the Bison Basketball Show and another great week of hoops in store for you as we start off February with a bang. The NDSU men tipping off the second half of Summit League play at South Dakota State on Thursday night before returning home to host South Dakota on Saturday afternoon. Both games can be seen on Midco Sports Network. Be sure to join us. The Bison women are back home on Thursday night to host South Dakota State on Midco SN2 at 7 p.m before hitting the road to take on South Dakota on Saturday afternoon in Vermilion. That'll do it for this week's show. We'll see you next time, everyone. Enjoy the games.